G'day, I'm Paul. Are you excited by electric cars or the thought of electric cars, but not excited by some of the price tags you're seeing? Well, this could be the answer to that. MG, they've just released this. It's called the MG4. It's actually one of the most cost-effective options if you do want to get yourself into an electric car, and it's brand new as well in terms of the platform. So, this is called the Essence. It's the top-spec version. It's priced at just under $56,000, but if that's too expensive, the entire range kicks off at a little under 40 grand, which I think is pretty good. This is going to compete with things like the Volkswagen ID3 when it arrives in Australia, the Cupra Born. It's that size of vehicle. It's also rear-wheel drive as well, so it gives you a bit of an idea, and the GWM Aura as well, which we tested previously. Today, we're going to do a detailed review of this car, so if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes that are on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive an aqua blue car. Now let's talk about design. Actually, before we do, it is bloody freezing here, so sorry if you hear some rustling from my jacket. This is very blue and you do have a number of colours to choose from and I love the fact that there are some exciting colours to choose from as well. They're not just all boring colours. Your optional colours are $700. Now this car in person looks fantastic. It really just has Oh, it just has a really cool vibe to it, and unlike the GWM Aura, which to me is a bit of an acquired taste, this on the other hand looks a little bit sportier and a bit more sort of uh, upbeat, if you will. Uh, so MG logo down the front there, you've got a little scallop here on the bonnet. Looks like it's housing a big V8 engine or something. Uh, full LED headlights with auto high beams. Now if you have a look down here as well, it's where your indicator is, and then you've got these matte black aero elements down the bottom with a radar sensor there in blue as well. Now, whip around to the side with me. Around here, you've got yourself a set of 18-inch alloy wheels with aero covers as well for efficiency. A little bit of piano black on the side here, and that theme actually continues inside the cabin as well on the wing mirrors too. You get a black roof as well, which I think looks good. That black section down the side looks great as well, so it has a rising belt line as it comes along there, and then it tapers off again as it comes towards the rear. Privacy glass, and then come around to the back with me. Now, this is probably my favourite part of the car. Have a look at this. You've got twin spoilers wrapped around that boot lid there, which I reckon looks pretty cool for, you know, an entry-level electric car. A little light built into there as well. I love this LED light as well. So it wraps around the side there, but this particular spec also has LEDs up the top here as well that light up too, which I think is cool. MG4 electric badge under there as well. Then a diffuser down the bottom. It's quite a narrow window, so I'll be interested to see what that's like when we go for a spin. Now, let me know what you're about the design do you think this looks good and what do you think about the price point as well i think i'm quite impressed with where they've priced it at let's hope that it uh, sort of drives and, and does all that sort of stuff great as well and it isn't just the price that is uh, sort of entry level so we are inside the mg4 this is what the key looks like you've got lock boot unlock and then on the back you got the mg logo now there is no push button to start this all you do is just put your foot on the brake and then it comes up saying ready to finish dealing with the car you just get out and lock the door now sounds good in theory but it's not the best system in the world because uh, like we've had today here you get out of the car you go do something but it just stays running so the wipers will keep going if it's raining the heater will keep running it just continuously drains the battery. If you look at other vehicles that have similar systems, like a, a Model 3, for example, once you get out and close the door, everything switches off. So I would much prefer that system where it just powers down. But anyway, just a minor thing they can fix with um, software update down the track. Now, just in terms of the design, so I love this big screen over here, the screen ahead of the driver, that's all really nicely laid out. I just wish it was a bit more colorful. You know, I mean, the outside of the car is so colorful and then in here, it's just so bland and very dreary looking. But um, anyway, our styling is subjective and then piano black. I really don't like piano black. It's all scratch marks and stuff. It just marks so easily and then it's impossible to keep clean. And this car's uh, virtually brand new and it's got these scuffs all over it. So that's um, it's going to be very hard to fix. But anyway, outside of that, what are your touch points like? So nice in the center there, not too bad on the door. How soft are they? We've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to other cars that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Now, what about your build quality? What's that like? It all feels really nice and solid. No dramas there. So what the door sounds like. Now let's talk infotainment. So central to the cabin is this 10.25 inch display, high resolution screen, quality of that is really nice. But 
you can see there that when I'm flicking between it, it can be a little bit laggy at times and I find that really strange. You've got a brand new sort of infotainment display and then it's um, sort of just a little bit fiddly to use at times. That even comes down to things like the physical buttons. They've got a couple of key buttons down here, but ultimately to, to change temperature, for example, you've got to go into this menu up the top and while you're driving as well, like try and get these buttons. Yeah, it's just a little bit um, a little bit fiddly. It would be nice to see some physical switches and buttons there. Built into this system is your EV information, so for, for charging and also uh, discharging. And this is also where you'll control your vehicle to load functionality. So you can actually power other devices from this vehicle's battery, which I think is a fantastic feature and it's really cool to see. Then you have uh, your connected services as well. So it actually comes down to, to radio too. So if you go into the radio menu, you have not only AM, FM and digital radio, but you also have online music. So you can hook up your Amazon Music account here to stream online music, which I reckon is just a, a fantastic feature. And outside of that, it's all pretty straightforward. You have a user manual built into here. You have the ability to connect to the car remotely. So it is a pretty comprehensive system. I just think it could be just a little bit quicker in terms of its functionality. Now I'll show you what Apple CarPlay looks like. Both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are wired. So this is Apple CarPlay here. You can see it takes up that full screen. No dramas there, flicking between those menus, just a tiny, tiny bit laggy. And this is Android Auto. Nice big display there and also easy to navigate as well. Let us know if you want us to do another uh, Apple CarPlay v Android Auto comparison too. Get one of those lined up with iOS 17. Outside of that, on the screen ahead of the driver, you have the rest of your controls. I love this, it's, it's a small enough display, but it gives you all of the critical information you need. So you've got stuff like your battery state, your driving range, information about the semi-autonomous systems, and you also have uh, other critical information like how much uh, power you're consuming and which drive mode it's in and that kind of thing. Now, what about your safety tech? So you have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. You've got an auto dimming rear vision mirror. Got a blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. You have radar cruise control. You also have a traffic jam assistant that will stop and go when you are in uh, traffic, effectively keeping a set distance between you and the car in front. You have rear cross traffic alert with auto stop. You've got rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. I'll show you what that looks like. Yeah, look, the quality of that. It's actually terrible. So you can't even see what's on the suitcase there. That's the top down view. And it is just super, super low quality. So. Yeah, I don't know, that probably needs a bit of work. Given this is a brand new car, it would have been nice to see a high, higher quality um, reverse view camera there. And this is what the horn sounds like. <laughs> Moving on to practicality, and we'll start off with your connectivity. So your phone can sit here on the wireless charger, or alternatively, you can whack it down here, because down here you've got a USB-A outlet, USB-C outlet, and a 12 volt outlet as well. Storing your drinks, so my little coffee cup, Fits nicely down there, no risk of de-litting, which is good news. Can also then fit a normal size bottle in there without any problems. Bottle can fit inside the door too. We'll try our big bottle as well, see how that goes. It fits in, very nice. Now, in terms of other storage, you've got this center console here that's really nice and deep. You have this center section as well with a little uh, sort of garage door on it. You've got a glove box over here that's small. Uh, and then you've also got a sunglasses holder up the top. Let's talk about your comfort uh, and we'll start off with your climate controls. So you only have single zone automatic climate control, but outside of that, you do have seat heating for the front seats and a steering wheel heater as well. So front seats are actually pretty comfy. So you've got a sort of fabric section in the center and then this leather material on the outside as well. Seats are electrically adjustable for the driver, so you can go forwards or backwards. Your backrest can go forwards and backwards, and then you can also lift the back of the seat. Passenger seat is entirely manually adjustable. In terms of your steering, it is manually adjustable for both tilt and reach. And have a look at this steering wheel. What a fancy looking design. Uh, and on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Now, second row, what's it like? Uh, knee room isn't great, uh, toe room is also not great. Uh, headroom isn't too bad. In terms of your other credit comforts, you've got slots here for your phone, map pockets, you've got a single USB-A outlet. No air vents here, unfortunately. Also no center armrest as well, but you do get ISO fix points on the outboard seats plus top tether points as well. And then you've got bottle storage inside the door too. Now, our window test. Does the window go down all the way? It's auto up and down. Look at that, winner, excellent. 
Now, cargo space, what's it like? Let's open it up. So you've got just over 350 litres available here with that second row in place. Show you what it's like with our bags in there. So laptop bag, suitcase, we'll see if that goes long ways. Nope, it goes sideways and that fits in. Now, you do have a little bit of extra storage. So the charger is in here. Actually a super light charger as well compared to a lot of other vehicles. So that's good to see. Uh, under here, you've got a little bit of extra storage there along with a tire repair kit as well. So no spare tire. If you do want to expand the space a little bit, you can drop the second row. So you get rid of your cargo blind and then you can drop your second row. Push that out of the way. That expands the space to a little under 1200 litres. Now, before we go for a spin, let me run you through the battery and charging. So this is your charge port. So this has a 77 kilowatt hour battery. It's a lithium ion NMC battery. NMC is nickel, manganese, cobalt. Three phase AC charging is available. And then on the DC front, it'll do up to 150 kilowatts and it peaks at around 140 kilowatts. WLTP driving range of a little over 500 kilometers as well. Okay, so we have hit the road in the MG4. It is unfortunately sopping wet today, so um, we're not gonna be able to do anything too exciting, but we will see how it all goes. Uh, so yeah, look, EV, quiet when you uh, set off, which is great news. I did notice when we were driving though at lower speeds, you do hear some noises coming from the motor in the rear. So it doesn't seem to have as much sort of padding as some of the other competitors in this segment. Not the end of the world, but um, just something I sort of noticed. Uh, one thing I did notice as well is that when we drove this car at the launch, they've since added a single pedal driving mode. So actually really curious to see what that's like. You have different uh, regen modes. You've got low, medium, high and adaptive. And let's just see what this single pedal's like. So I'm just sort of slowing down now. We should come to a complete stop as part of that. Nice. Yeah, that all feels really good. No dramas there at all. Okay, very impressive. And that came as a uh, over-the-air update, which is pretty cool. Now, what is powering this? Well, it's got the 77 kilowatt hour battery, and then it uses a single electric motor on the rear axle. So that makes 180 kilowatts of power and 350 newton meters of torque. That's pretty much exactly where you want to be for a rear wheel drive car. And uh, let me explain why, because at the moment when it's wet, if you do come to a complete stop and then get on the throttle, you can hear it's constantly fighting uh, the loss of traction there. So any more power on a rear wheel drive vehicle like this, and you're gonna have issues with traction constantly when it's wet. So it's right where it needs to be. And that uh, offers you a zero to 100 time of a uh, little under seven seconds, which we're gonna test very soon as well. And what does all that feel like behind the wheel? Well, when you get sort of stuck into it, it sort of pushes you back in the seat nicely. It, it just reminds me of a Tesla Model 3, if I'm honest. It just feels exactly like that when it comes to acceleration. It's, um, it's really quite, Nice and brisk and not over the top. It just feels very gradual and, and effective in the way that it deals with itself. And this top spec version also has more power. The lower variants that have uh, different battery capacities actually have less power. So it's good to see that this has just a bit more oomph. Now let's talk economy. So uh, MG claims a combined average of around 17 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. Uh, we're sitting on 22.2. So not exactly the best economy in the world. Uh, a little surprised by that. I think that could just come down to the type of driving we've been doing today. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, I just think that that's probably a little bit high for my liking. Uh, if you do look at other competitors in this segment, they're sort of sitting around the 14 or 15 kilowatt hour per 100k mark. Probably the thing that has surprised me the most driving this around is the ride quality. It is fantastic, both in and around the city and out here on the, the sort of highway. It actually just soaks in bumps nicely. They've put a lot of effort into making sure that it is a civil car to drive. And uh, that's exactly what you need. If you do compare it to something like a Model 3, the Model 3 is so harsh in comparison to this. This is just that perfect balance. Now let's see if that stacks up when the speed does pick up. We're gonna push this up to 130, which is maximum speed limit in Australia and also the speed that we attack our sine waves at. Whole purpose of that is to see what the body control is like if you're doing something like an overtake out in the country. Dial the speed up here. Alrighty, so there's 130. That's excellent. They've done a really good job with that. Very, very impressive. Okay, so bumpy road time. We do this at 90 k's an hour. This simulates the worst road in Australia and it gives us a really good feel 
for what this is like across choppy sections of roads. We've got a uh, condensed sine wave here to what this is like. Yeah, nice. They've done such a good job with the ride. I'm really, really impressed with that, even on this stretch of bad road. Now, in terms of road noise, uh, there is a bit of road noise that comes into the cabin. The damping isn't fantastic. It's not over the top, but you will notice it when you are driving on coarse chip country roads. It, it sort of tends to be a little bit noisy inside the cabin, uh, but not the end of the world. And, and this is how it went up against our calibrated sound meter. Now, let's talk drive modes. So, we've got snow, eco, sport, and custom. I'm going to pop it into sport mode. We'll see what that feels like around our track. So, it is very wet, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do anything interesting here, but let's see how we go. All right. Oh, this is actually a little bit of fun. All right. Um, yeah, look, it is uh, tucking in nicely. He'll roll onto the throttle on this back straight section. Yeah, nice. It's actually got a lot of legs. It's interesting, once the speed picks up, it doesn't sort of fade away like a lot of electric vehicles do. It's still actually quite keen to keep going. Brake pedal feel isn't too bad either. Yeah, it's actually not too bad. I actually thought this was going to be just completely different to this. MG has really come a long way since the MG of old. Like, it is um, It's actually really surprising. So, yeah, like I said, unfortunately, it is very wet out here at the moment. So I don't really have a great deal of traction. And I am keen to come back here when it is dry. And in fact, I'm actually quite keen to drive the all-wheel drive car there. They're bringing to Australia as well. I think that'll be an absolute rocket ship out here. I hate this though. There are no auto wipers, which is the most bizarre thing in the world. Yeah, look, so uh, from a handling standpoint, it's actually, <laughs> it's really not that bad. It's quite impressive actually. In terms of visibility, so I can see clearly down the front of the car there, the wing mirrors are nice and big. Visibility out the back isn't very good. That window is very narrow and the seats are huge, or the seat tops are huge where the headrests are and they really sort of interfere with vision there, so that could be a little bit better. Now, time to test the uh, semi-autonomous systems here. So I'm gonna get this up to 70, which is the speed we test all of this stuff at. Whole idea is we use our bowl here to get just a bit of a representation of what this would be like on an open road and how well it'll keep itself within the lane. So uh, we'll try it in each of these lanes and see how it performs. Yeah, so it's just a lane keeping assistant. It doesn't um, seem to have a lane centering function at all. And as a result of that, it can be sort of a little bouncy in terms of where it goes. Okay, so we'll just test it in this first lane. As we approach, it sort of pulses the car back into the center there but it's not actually keeping it within the center. So yeah, it's just a lane departure avoidance system as opposed to an actual lane centering assistant. One thing I'm a fan of is the turning circle. It's around 10 and a half meters and it means that you can just dial in lock and it turns on a dime. It is, it is genuinely impressive. Very happy with that. And if you do want to tow, you have a brake towing capacity of 500 kilograms. Okay, performance testing time. Uh, let's chat Help Me Car Expert first. So Help Me Car Expert is basically a Google term. You go to Google, you type in Help Me Car Expert, it'll take you to a web page. That web page will connect you with the dealers we have on our platform. Car Expert's a big company. It's not just us doing video out here and the dealers that are on our platform are there to help you find a car that's in stock and also get you the best deal on it as well. So uh, Help Me Car Expert, go to Google and have a look at that. Now. Uh, MG claims a 0 to 100 time of 6.5 seconds, so it is absolutely drenched at the moment, so we'll see how we go. Might actually turn off uh, traction control first to give that a shot. We'll go all the way through to 120, and then uh, if that goes pear-shaped, we'll um, <laughs> give it another shot uh, with traction control on. So here we go. Stop. Let's see what that's like. All right, that actually felt nice and quick. So zero to 100, 6.52 seconds. So pretty much bang on the money and in completely drenched conditions as well, which is pretty good. And then 80 to 120, 4.63 seconds. That's actually really good as well. Shows you that it has a stack of mid-range there, even though uh, you know it does taper off when it speeds up. So that is, that is bloody good. Okay, now our stop from 100. 
It is so wet out here at the moment, so we will see how we go. All right, here we go. Uh, okay, so 100 to zero, 3.82 seconds and 51 meters, which is pretty much exactly what I was expecting <laughs> here in the wet. Uh, yeah, look, if we do get the MG4 back at some point when it's dry, we'll do another break from 100 to see how it goes. But um, unfortunately, can't help the weather conditions. Now, our reverse acceleration test. Let's see how we go. All right. Oh, nice. Yeah, 43 kilometers an hour. So MG4, is it the affordable electric car we were hoping for? Yes, it is, uh, but just not in this spec, I reckon. I think this is a little bit too close to Tesla Model 3 money, and I think the Tesla Model 3 is a better vehicle. But at the entry level or in the mid spec, that is where this becomes really good value for money. You've got rear wheel drive, so it's fun to drive. You've got a decent amount of range, and it comes with all the, the bells and whistles you'd expect in this day and age. So let me know what you reckon in the comments section below. Are you looking for an electric car? Have you test driven this? And if so, what did you think? I'm keen for your feedback. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, drive safely.